Getting around Disney World seems easy, right? They offer free buses, boats, the monorail, and Skyliner. Or you can just drive yourself to get everywhere you need to go. Well, things aren't as easy as they seem, and the secrets we're going to share today can save you hours of wasted time. Believe me, I've already wasted it. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Whether you're figuring out the best way to get to the parks, deciding if your kids really need a stroller, or making the call on a rental car, this video is for you. I'm gonna dish the secrets you better know about getting around Disney World. It's more complicated than you think, and there's a lot you're not considering. Now, if you want to get the list of these secrets sent right to your inbox in an easy, compact PDF that you can download and print to have on hand whenever you need it, go to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash get around and you'll get just that. We'll also sign you up for our totally free newsletter so you can always stay up to date on the latest news and information from the Disney parks. All right, let's jump in. Take those timetables with a grain of salt. Times for bus transportation are available on screens at the bus stops at your resort and in the My Disney Experience app. But don't take that 820 arrival as a cold hard fact. Disney often states that buses run every 20 minutes, but if you've been to Disney before, you know that's not always true. You'll need to allow for late transportation, longer waits, maybe have a plan B in place if you really need to get somewhere quickly and there's no bus in sight. Also keep in mind the times that transportation is operating. Things don't run all night long. Buses start running about 45 minutes before park opening, and they run for about one hour after park close. The monorail starts running 30 minutes before park opening and runs for about one hour after park close as well. Same with the Skyliner. If you hop in line for a ride right at park close, you may leave and find the Skyliner has stopped running for the night and you need to take a bus back. Boats may stop running if there's bad weather and the Skyliner will too, so you may be redirected for a bus if you're in one of those Florida downpours. Now, if you're one of the last people leaving the park and most transportation has stopped for the night, you won't be stranded. Just find a cast member and they'll get you to where you need to go. Another big thing to know about Disney transportation is that the fastest way to get from here to there might very well be your own two feet. Yep, transportation itself may not take all that long, but the wait for it can really wreck your plans. So instead of waiting a long time for a monorail, bus, or boat, see if you can walk to your destination instead. This won't work everywhere, so don't just start walking thinking you can get to the park from wherever you are by foot, but there are a few convenient walking paths that you can take advantage of that not a lot of people know about. There are paths from multiple resorts to at least one theme park or to Disney Springs. Saratoga Springs Resort connects to Disney Springs. The Swan and Dolphin Yacht and Beach Clubs and the Boardwalk Inn are all a short walk to Hollywood Studios in Epcot. The Contemporary Resort connects to Magic Kingdom by a short path, and you can walk between Magic Kingdom and the Grand Floridian, all the way to the Polynesian Village Resort and the Ticket and Transportation Center. The walkway from Grand Floridian does have a gate that will lock about one and a half hours after park closing. Now keep in mind that if you have a late dining reservation in the park or got in line for a ride at the very end of the night, you may need to find another way back to your resort. You also need to know about the secret Epcot entrance, International Gateway. The back entrance into World Showcase at Epcot is often overlooked. A lot of first timers don't even know it exists. This is how you'll get into the park if you're coming from Yacht and Beach Clubs or the Boardwalk and the Swan and Dolphin. Give yourself 15 to 25 minutes to reach the park entrance from your hotel, especially if you're traveling with little kids and walking. This entrance is less secret now that it has its very own Skyliner station, but still only the resorts on the Skyliner will be using it. That's Art of Animation, Pop Century, Caribbean Beach, and Riviera Resort. And this is going to be the top secret for when Rami's Ratatouille Adventure opens October 1st in the France Pavilion. The International Gateway entrance drops you right next to the France Pavilion, so while you may be able to enter the park a little early at the front entrance, you're going to have to walk all the way through the park to get to the new ride. Entering through the International Gateway, whether you can get in early or not is going to save you some critical time. But remember, you're not going to be able to park at those hotels if you're not staying there. So don't even try it because those Disney security guys have heard all of the stories before. All right, another big tip. We've mentioned it before on the channel. Use GPS and not Disney signage. Road signage around Disney World is used for purposes of controlling traffic patterns, not necessarily showing you the fastest or easiest way to get somewhere. If you follow those big purple signs, it's not always the fastest way to get around. 
Make sure your GPS is updated and you're using one that you know you can rely on to show up-to-date construction. Stuff changes so fast at Disney World when it comes to construction. A road you used on your last trip may be blocked off or you need to use a different entrance. Also, keep an eye on traffic. There will always be traffic getting into a park when it opens and out when it closes, but if you use an app like Waze, you'll see real-time traffic updates and can adjust your route if needed. All right, next big tip, you can pay for priority parking. Yep, regular parking at Disney's theme parks costs $25 a day, while preferred parking is gonna run you $45 to $55 per day. If you're staying at a Disney hotel and paying a nightly parking fee, you can get preferred parking by paying the difference, $20 to $25 per day. By the way, annual pass holders, you can do that too. So why would you wanna shell out the extra cash for a preferred parking spot? Well, when the parks are very crowded, you could end up parking very far away from the entrance. If you want to be able to swing by the car during the day that's going to be a huge pain to do since the parks aren't that crowded right now parking lots aren't either but parking lot trams aren't running so if you don't want to trek too far on foot you might want to pay extra for a spot closer to the entrance this perk will hop with you if you park hop too if you pay for preferred parking at one location you can show your receipt at the next park you go to that day and get it there as well now it won't follow you from day to day but it will follow you from park to park on the same day if you need handicap accessible parking, that's also right by the park entrance and you won't need to pay extra for it. Just show the parking attendant your handicap parking permit. Now this is one of my favorite tips. When boarding the monorail, keep on walking. Yeah, we all like a little extra space on public transportation, right? But there's a tip to help you possibly secure your own car. Head all the way to the end of the platform. Most people are gonna hop in the car closest to them when they first get up to the monorail, but if you keep walking, you may get your own private car or at least one with a few less people to share with. You likely won't be so lucky at peak travel times, but if you're on the monorail in the middle of the day when everyone else is in the park, you may get an exclusive ride. Now, right now, some monorails have sections on them that you are directed to sit in a particular numbered section. But as things start to go back to normal and the monorail has fewer social distancing additions, then I think they're gonna go back to you choosing your own seat on the monorail. And that's when this tip is gonna come in really handy. Okay, this is a great tip if you have a larger party or if you have someone with mobility concerns. The parks all have a drop-off location where you can drop off your family before you go park your car. If you're running late for a dining reservation, you can drop everyone else so they can go ahead. When you enter a theme park parking lot, there will be signage that directs you to guest drop-off areas. This is where rideshare services or taxis will drop you off as well. Drop-off areas may not be directly in front of the park entrance, but they're typically much closer than wherever you're gonna eventually park your car, which can help most of your party get where they need to go faster. If you're running late, be sure to call and notify the restaurant about that. And if you're running late for, say, your Rise of the Resistance boarding group, maybe take one for the team, drop off the family so not everyone misses the ride. Typically, if there's a legitimate reason you're running late, they'll still let you in line. But if it's just that you lost track of time, they may not be able to help. Do keep in mind that if you're dropping the family off at Magic Kingdom, you can't actually drop them right at the park. Guest pickup and drop off is located over at the Ticket and Transportation Center, and everyone will need to take the monorail, ferry, or boat to get to the park, which can add a lot of time. But at Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and Animal Kingdom, you can drop everyone off right at the front of the park before you go park your car. Okay, moving on to number eight, the ferry may actually be faster, right? If you're going from the Transportation and Ticket Center to Magic Kingdom, the monorail always seems like the obvious choice. It's fun, it moves faster, but the ferry can hold a lot of people and wait times may not be nearly as long as they are for the monorail, which can only hold a limited number of guests in each car. Fewer ferries operate once the morning rush is over, so the monorail may win out come midday, but if you're hitting the park when it first opens or closes, it may be quicker to travel by water. Now here's a hot tip. If they're offering buses from the Transportation and Ticket Center, that's gonna be your fastest option. Pretty much no one takes them because who wants to get on another Disney bus? This typically only happens when the parks are very busy though, so they may not be running all the time, but if they are, grab them. Now, speaking of buses, 
anywhere other than the transportation and ticket center, they may not be your best friend. If you're staying at Disney World, it's pretty certain that you're going to end up on a Disney bus at some point during your trip, unless you're only using your own car. Buses are available at every hotel to take you to the parks in Disney Springs, though some hotels, like the Monorail and Skyliner hotels, offer different transportation options and may not have bus service to every park all the time. Depending on where you're staying, the wait for a bus could be very long. Especially now, with limited capacity, buses can fill up, so you have to wait for multiple runs before you can actually get on board. Now, that may be changing soon. Soon, but in the meantime, that's the case. Some resorts like Caribbean Beach, Coronado Springs, and Port Orleans Riverside are pretty notorious for buses being full by the time they get to you because they stop at several bus stops throughout the resort before heading to the parks. You may have to make four or five stops before you even leave your hotel. Or worse yet, make all those stops when you just want to get back to your room at the end of the night. Also keep in mind at hotels with multiple bus stops to check which stop is actually closest to your room. If you're staying at the All Stars, you might find that a bus stop at the neighboring hotel is actually closer to your room. Some hotels, like the All Star Resorts, will double up on buses too, meaning one bus services all three of those hotels. This also happens sometimes with the monorail resorts or boardwalk area resorts. And I guess in the case of the All Stars, you'd be tripling up. And another thing to know about those buses, you will wait for buses at the end of the night when you're leaving the parks at closing time. Even if they are running a little bit faster, because they often send more buses when they know more people are gonna be waiting, it could take an hour to actually get back to your room because of the number of people waiting to also get back to their rooms. So if you're in the middle of trying to figure out what hotel you want to stay at at Disney World, you definitely want to consider transportation for that too. Some hotels only offer bus service to the theme parks. Some have other options like boats or the monorail or the Skyliner. It may be better to book something with multiple forms of transportation and a walking path to at least one of the theme parks, even if it costs a little more. But I understand sometimes it costs a lot more and that's not in the budget. If Disney World is especially busy when you visit, you may be able to use alternate transport or just walk which can end up saving you a lot of time over waiting on buses. And you got to think about the fact that time is money in Disney World. You're only there for a limited amount of time. There's so much to do. You're spending so much money on those park tickets. So the more you can limit how much time you waste in transportation, the better. Disney World is about the same size as the entire city of San Francisco. It's huge. And riding a bus from one end to the other can really set you back about an hour door to door. Now that depends on traffic and it depends on how long you gotta wait for a bus, but it's happened to me before for sure. So when you're thinking about hotels and you're thinking, well, that's way too much to spend per night, also factor in how much time you're going to spend getting from here to there if you stay at a less expensive hotel and note that that's going to limit the time you get to spend in the parks. So consider hotels on the monorail line, the contemporary Grand Floridian Polynesian Village Resort if you're going to Magic Kingdom a lot. Skyliner Resorts have easy access to Hollywood Studios and Epcot. And again, those resorts around the boardwalk and Epcot's International Gateway also have easy access to Hollywood Studios and Epcot. You want to spend a lot of time at Animal Kingdom? You're out of luck. But your best bet is going to be Animal Kingdom Lodge, which has the shortest bus ride to get there. Okay, now here's a relatively hot take. Magical Express may not be the best airport transportation. Right, so Magical Express is Disney's free transportation bus to and from the airport. And while free is great, this might not be your best option, especially not right now. Wait times have been astronomical lately. During spring break, when parks were at capacity and All-Star Movies Resort had just reopened, people were waiting two hours before even getting onto the bus to head to Disney World from the airport. No one wants to get off a flight after already waiting in TSA lines to encounter a massive line and a wait to get on a coach bus so that you can actually start your vacation. The drive, if you go direct, is only about 20 to 25 minutes from the airport to Disney World if there's not a lot of traffic. Magical Express does make multiple stops too, so if you're the last hotel, you're going to be on that bus for at least 45 minutes to an hour on top of the wait to get on the bus in the first place. You may be able to gauge if Magical Express will be crowded by looking at whether or not park passes are sold out during your trip, or if there are any conventions or sports competitions happening at Disney. Basically, if there's gonna be a lot of crowds at Disney World, then Magical Express can be crowded as well. But you still may be surprised by an unexpectedly long wait that you may wanna make a plan B for. All right, here are your plan Bs. Mirrors operates shuttles that you can book in advance or see if there's availability when you arrive at the airport. These charge a per person fee. 
You can get a rental car if you already have no interest in dealing with the potential headache of Disney's free bus, or you can always get a taxi or a ride share like Uber or Lyft from the airport directly to your hotel. These are easier to do last minute if you've been caught off guard by a long wait. You'll need to work on that plan B if you're going to Disney in 2022 since the Magical Express is being discontinued at the end of the year. But remember, we do have a high-speed train confirmed to be coming to Disney World from the airport. When that's going to happen is another question. Now, if you want to have your own rental car, you can pick it up at the airport or you can get it right at Disney World. This is great if you only need a rental car for one or two days and you don't want to pay for it for your whole vacation. Over by Magic Kingdom, you're going to find the Car Care Center, which in addition to a service garage, also has an Alamo car rental facility right on property. So if you're thinking you want to go to Universal for a couple days or you're going to go to the beach for a couple days, you want to go to Kennedy Space Center, this is a great option. There is a free shuttle for most resorts on the theme parks to the car care center if you need it. And there's also an Alamo car rental location at the Dolphin Resort if you're staying in the boardwalk area. So you may be able to just walk to pick up your rental car. Now let's talk about rideshare services. They may be fastest and easiest for you right now. If you need to get to and from the airport, you're running late for dining reservations, or you want to avoid a crowd waiting for the bus to get to the park in the morning, you might be better off calling an Uber or Lyft. This is definitely cheaper than renting a car if you only need it a few times and you can just use it when you need it, no pre-planning necessary. Wait times and pricing can be more than usual as the number of drivers has gone down while the number of ride requests has gone up. So maybe call that car a little earlier than you normally would to make sure you still arrive on time. Now, your best bet is to download that Uber and Lyft app at home so that you already have it downloaded and you know how it works. Maybe get a couple of Uber or Lyft rides at home before you get to Disney World so you've got the lay of the land and you know how it works. Now, here's a big tip. The rideshare service you choose may have a discount code available, and you can actually find them sometimes right in the app. First-time rideshare users are frequently offered a discount, but always check the apps to see who has the best deal going. The most popular rideshare services like Uber and Lyft also offer a monthly subscription plan. Now, the plans run about $20 a month, but you'll get as much as 20% off your rides. Lyft Pink subscription plan also offers priority pickup at the airport, and they advertise surprise discounts. So if you'll be using the rideshare services often during your stay, it may end up being worth it to look into the monthly subscription plans or at least find yourself a discount code before you head over. Now this is a huge, huge, huge tip, this next one. Disney Springs is not a free parking option for the parks. Disney's working very hard to make sure you do not think that it is. Parking at Disney Springs is free for anyone, but don't make the mistake of thinking you can just park there and easily get to the theme parks to avoid paying that $25 per day parking fee. Buses do not run from Disney Springs to the theme parks ever right now. In the past, buses have run from the parks to Disney Springs after 4 p.m., but that's a one-way ride when it's available. And if you wanted to get to the parks from Disney Springs, you'd need to first head to a Disney hotel, either by bus, boat, or foot, and then you'll need to transfer on another bus or other mode of transportation to get you to the parks. This is going to take a lot of time and it's not worth the 25 bucks you're going to save on parking. Again, time is money in Disney World. Remember that. You don't want to waste two plus hours of your day transferring around buses just to save $25. Now, I know this next tip is not for everyone, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway, just in case it's for you. Free resort valet parking. If your vehicle has handicap tags or parking permit or your Tables in Wonderland member, you can get free valet parking at resorts that offer it, at least for a limited time. This is going to save you 33 bucks that they normally charge for valet, just remember to tip, and saves you the hassle of trying to find a parking spot if you're headed to dinner at a resort or at a hotel that may have limited handicapped accessible spaces. LA is not 100% back up and running, so your mileage may vary with where you can use this right now. Now, Tables in Wonderland also gives you free theme park parking for the purposes of dining. If you arrive before 5 p.m., you will have to pay when you pull in, but when you finish dining, you can take your restaurant receipt to guest services. If you've been in the park less than three hours, which is the limit they give you for the free parking deal, and you provide your parking receipt, Tables in Wonderland membership card, and dining receipt, they'll refund your parking fees. If you arrive at the park after 
after 5 p.m., you'll just have to show your Tables in Wonderland membership card at the Auto Plaza. Don't forget, in order to take advantage of the free parking at the parks, you'll also need theme park admission and that park reservation. If you are dining inside one of the resorts, you also have a three hour limit there with Tables in Wonderland. We usually find that this gives us plenty of time to eat and depending on the dining location, you may be able to browse a gift shop or two. Again, make sure that you bring back your dining receipt in order to get the valet for free with Tables in Wonderland. And remember that if you're staying at more than one Disney World hotel during your Disney World trip, Bell Services will transfer your luggage. This is super, super helpful when you are in that transition day. Nope, you can't take your luggage on buses or the monorail and you didn't rent a car, so what are you gonna do with that luggage? Well, just drop it at Bell Services at your first hotel, let them know which Disney hotel you're staying at next and they'll get your luggage over there for you. It can take several hours for your stuff to arrive, so make sure you've got everything you need for the day from your bag before you drop it off. This is a great perk that's totally free, except of course for tips, and allows you to just go have a great day at the park, and when you arrive at your second hotel, your bags will probably already be there. All right, tip number 17, don't always rely on Disney strollers. If you have little kids who are gonna need a stroller for a lot of the trip, we're talking to get from the room to the bus and back again at the end of the night, you're not gonna wanna rely on renting strollers directly from Disney. When you do, you can only rent strollers in the parks, so you need to return them before you head out to catch a bus, which might not pan out if you got a kiddo who fell asleep in that stroller. It's easier to get around with a rented stroller from a third-party company or bring one from home. Now, some third-party companies will deliver your stroller to your hotel. Keep in mind, though, that Disney only has one featured provider. What this means is that while one stroller rental company, Scooterbug, can bring the stroller to your resort and Bell Services will hang on to it for you, that isn't the case with all stroller rental companies, including the most popular ones. For most others, you will set up a specific time and a place to meet them at your hotel. There are some stroller rental companies though that have now partnered with vendors at the Orlando International Airport and you can snag your rented stroller before you ever head to Magical Express. So once you choose your stroller rental company, see if that's an option. So you can have it the whole time rather than just inside the parks. But keep in mind that on Disney buses, you do need to fold your stroller. So practice that ahead of time or consider staying somewhere that doesn't rely heavily on bus transportation. You can just wheel a stroller right onto a boat, monorail or Skyliner and that might be easier than waking up a sleeping kid to fold everything up and juggle all your bags as you get on the bus. You can just wheel a stroller right onto most of the boats, but you always want to check with the boat captain and follow their directions. Flags are also your friends. In general, the green and red flag launches are stroller and ECV friendly. Green runs between the Magic Kingdom and Fort Wilderness. Red takes you between Magic Kingdom and Wilderness Lodge. Depending on the guests waiting to take these launches, you may be directed to an area of the boat that is wheelchair friendly and will accommodate an open stroller. If there are guests in wheelchairs waiting to board, the captain may ask you to fold your stroller. The blue and gold flag boats, which go between the Contemporary Resort, Fort Wilderness and Wilderness Lodge, and the Magic Kingdom and Grand Floridian, respectively, can accommodate strollers, but they have to be folded. Our next transportation tip is to not transport. <laughs> it's basically to linger. And I've already talked about the massive crowds you're gonna encounter at park close, waiting to get on that monorail, the Skyliner buses and boats. But remember that there will be transportation options available at least an hour after the park officially closes. So the tip here is to take your time leaving the park. Don't race to get to transportation. You'll just have to wait in another line. Shops will stay open after the park close, so take your time walking down Main Street and grab some souvenirs in the Emporium. When you're done, a good number of people will have already made it onto buses and lines may be significantly shorter. Now we're headed back to those resorts that have all of those bus stops, what we call bus loops. Disney resorts with shared buses or internal bus systems like Caribbean Beach, Coronado Springs, Port Orleans Riverside have another downside for those of you with ECVs or scooters. I already mentioned how those multiple bus stops can be a pain and the bus might be full by the time it arrives at your stop, but if you've got an ECV and that bus is nearing capacity, there's no way you're gonna get on. And if there are multiple ECVs waiting to get on, you're looking at an even longer wait. If you are visiting visiting Disney World with an ECV or wheelchair and plan on taking the Magical Express, you want to let them know ahead of time as well. Otherwise, you may be stuck waiting a long time for an accessible bus to become available. There is limited capacity for wheelchairs and ECVs on Disney transportation. Each bus can only fit two max, and you'll want to prepare for some long lines and maybe try to travel during less busy transportation hours if you can manage it. Now this is when I have personal experience with avoid boat travel during the electrical water pageant. Every night on Seven Seas Lagoon out 
outside of Magic Kingdom, you can catch the Electrical Water Pageant. Now, this show is fun. It's been around since nearly day one of Disney World, but it can be a big pain in the neck if you're trying to get across the water. The ferry boat and resort boats to the Polynesian Village Resort, Grand Floridian, Contemporary Wilderness Lodge, and Fort Wilderness can't run as the water pageant is sailing past. So you may be stuck at a boat dock or stuck out on the water waiting for the floats to go by. Right now, the water pageant runs from around 840 to 945. So keep that in mind as it could block some water routes during that time. I personally kind of had to sit for a good 20 or 30 minutes in the middle of Bay Lake waiting for the water pageant to go by and I had to go to the bathroom real, real bad. So that was not good timing. All right, now we hope you never need to use this tip, but if an emergency does come up at Disney World, they do offer free shuttle service to an off-site urgent care location run by Advent Health. The urgent care location is open 24 seven and you can call 407-934-2273 for more information about that. Next tip is to factor in a walk. Any form of Disney transportation is only gonna drop you at a park entrance or hotel lobby. Your actual destination may be a bit of a walk from that stop, especially if you're visiting a hotel for dinner and you've never been there before and you're not really sure how to get to the restaurant. Like here's a quick example. If you're going to Narcoosie's for dinner in the Grand Floridian Resort and you're at the Magic Kingdom, don't take the monorail over. That'll be a long ride and then a long walk to the restaurant, which is right on the water. Instead, Take the boat and you'll be right there. Now, if you take a bus to the Contemporary Resort, it could still be a good five or 10 minute walk to California Grill, especially in heels. And if you're getting dropped at the front of Epcot, but your dinner reservation is back at Teppanetto in the Japan Pavilion, you gotta walk the entire length of the park to get there. It's always a good idea to give yourself 60 to 90 minutes to get from here to there, even if Google Maps says it'll be quick or your bus is the next one to arrive. Now, don't forget one of our favorite tips, take the resort monorail instead of the express monorail. Depending on the time of day, express may not be your best choice, right? That's weird, but if the line is long for the express monorail, hop on the resort monorail. Even though it makes more stops, the ride itself may be shorter than the wait for the express monorail. So if you get there and see there is no line for the resort monorail, that'll get you where you wanna go and maybe a little faster. Now I know we shared a lot of tips in this video, but don't worry, we've got that cheat sheet for you over at disneyfoodblog.com slash get around. We'll send that right to your inbox so you can be a Disney transportation pro in no time. Disney has a lot of options when it comes to getting around, but remember that free doesn't always mean good and that crowds or bad weather can make or break that quick Skyliner ride to Hollywood Studios. Have a backup plan. Do your research ahead of time so you know how to get from point A to point B from where you're staying and be patient. Also, download those rideshare apps, you guys. You never know when those are going to come in real, real handy. Do you have any other transportation tips or secrets? I'm sure you do. Be sure to share them in the comments because you know what? Anytime you share your experience and your great tips, all of our viewers get to benefit from them. So they all have better trips to Disney World too. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.